For a long time, we were afraid. We were afraid of the dark. We were afraid of the unknown. We were afraid of our past and what it meant for our future. Alone, isolated, yet exposed to the world. We knew there were others like us out there, yet we were scared to confront their pain because of what they understood about our pain. Last year, we all took a bold step to overcome the fears about ourselves, to band together to become a force for change, to speak for all those who cannot speak for themselves, to make the invisible visible, to make the two-dimensional three-dimensional. We are the Phoenix Eleven. Sexually abused as children, reduced to child sex abuse images, and stripped of our dignity and humanity, we have risen together as powerful young women who are retaking our identities and self-worth. No longer content to live in the shadows, we are redefining what it means to be victims who are powerless to stop the relentless onslaught of the technology of abuse. We are survivors of sexual torture, child rape, erotic photo shoots, pedophile sleepovers, elementary school sex shows, streaming BDSM, and twisted sexual desires, whose digital images were trafficked worldwide to fulfill the endless needs of an evil, perverted community, which takes pleasure from our pain. Now we are putting the world on notice that we will no longer be a silent, suffering collage of young girls and boys whose nameless and often faceless images and videos circulate worldwide on the internet festival of humanity. We are the Phoenix Eleven. Hear our voice. See our strength. Answer our call. We will not be stopped. We will not be silent. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for, for joining us today. I'm pleased that I'm joined here today by Secretary Chad Wolf of the Department of uh, Homeland Security and my distinguished uh, colleagues from the Five Eyes, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom, and representatives of uh, some of the leading tech companies uh, who are joining us in this very important announcement of the voluntary principles to counter online child sexual exploitation and abuse. Last summer, uh, I traveled to London to participate in our Five, Five Eyes conference there and uh, to hold a five country ministerial digital industry roundtable. There, our five nations met with senior representatives of Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Roblox, Snap, and Twitter. We agreed that a more robust global response toward online, uh, online child sexual abuse was necessary to protect children around the world and to make sure that there was no safe space on the internet for offenders to operate. Further, we committed to developing a set of voluntary principles to ensure online platforms and services have the systems they need to combat online sexual uh, exploitation of children. As a result of that meeting, and a lot of uh, diligent work since then, today we are collectively launching the 11 voluntary principles. And I'm happy that the hard work by both the Five, I, five Eyes and uh, our industry colleagues have come to fruition today. The 11 voluntary principles establish a baseline framework for companies that provide online services to deter the use of the internet as a tool for sexually exploiting and abusing children. The six technology companies involved in this initiative have now publicly endorsed the principles and I commend them for their leadership. We're very grateful for the role they have played. And actually, when this 
meeting was announced, we've heard from some additional companies that they would like to, like to participate. The sexual exploitation and abuse of children is one of the most horrendous crimes affecting the most vulnerable members of our society. Unfortunately, this has emerged as a massive problem, not only in the real world, but in the virtual world. Last year alone, more than 16.8 million cyber tips of suspected child sexual abuse material offenses were made to the National Center uh, for Missing and Exploited Children, NCMEC, involving children as young as infants. Earlier today at the White House, we heard from the members of the Phoenix 11, which is the group responsible for the video that you just watched. Phoenix 11 is an organization of survivors whose child sexual abuse was recorded and in a majority of cases distributed online. I commend these brave survivors uh, for raising the profile of this issue. Our nation owes them a debt of, uh, debt of gratitude uh, for their courage in coming forward. They have given voice to victims that have been silenced, and uh, they inspire us to take action. No child should ever have to endure the unspeakable pain and suffering of sexual exploitation and abuse. Sadly, however, technological change over the past few decades have amplified the scope and harm caused by these crimes. First, the borderless nature of the internet has made these crimes transnational. A global prob problem requires a global solution. We are therefore collaborating with our international counterparts, particularly our close rule of law allies like those represented in this room. Second, technology has made it easier to produce, conceal, and distribute child sexual abuse materials. For example, over the last decade, the Department of Justice has seen a 160% increase in cases involving the production of videos and images of children who are sexually exploited and abused. This increase is due, in part, to the ready accessibility of smartphones, which can be used to both produce images and videos and distribute them. Third, with digital content, sexual abuse imagery can be preserved online for much longer periods of time and disseminated more broadly. Victims incur not only the initial harm of abuse, but are victimized again and again when those images are recirculated. For example, sexual abuse imagery of one particular victim has been found in almost 21,500 U.S. investigations over the last 20 years. And as we heard from the courageous victims this morning, the Phoenix 11 when we met with them, knowing that their child sexual abuse materials are still online being distributed is debilitating and preventing many of them from being able to use the internet. Victims should not be forced to live in such fear. Fourth, the internet affords child predators more places to hide. Predators often use anonymous or false personas even in the most innocuous of settings, like online ch children's games. A suspicious individual interacting with children at a real world arcade is easier to detect than a predator lurking in the digital world. They also communicate using virtually unbreakable encryption. As the survivors of our roundtable this morning implored, predators' supposed privacy interests should not outweigh our children's privacy and security. There's too much at stake. While technology is part of the problem, it is also part of the solution. And that is why we're heartened to be here today with our partners from the five countries, but also the representatives from Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Roblox, Snap, and Twitter to announce these voluntary principles and to encourage others in the tech world to join this initiative. This is the first time 
that our five nations have collaborated in this way with technical uh, technology companies to protect children against online exploitation. The voluntary principles that we are announcing today have already been implemented informally by some of the leaders in the industry. And now formalized, they can serve as a baseline for the rest of the industry to use and hopefully to build upon as they assess their current vulnerabilities and design new products and services. These are an important first step, but we can and must do more. The department, for one, is prioritizing combating child sexual exploitation and abuse in our prosecution efforts. And we are also addressing child exploitation in our efforts on retaining lawful access and in analyzing the impact of Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act on incentives for platforms to address these crimes and the availability of civil remedies to the victims. Government, however, cannot do this alone. Given the size and scope of this problem, we each need to do our part. As government, as governments, as industry leaders, as parents, as grandparents, as a global community, we all have a duty, indeed a moral imperative, to protect our children from these abhorrent abuses in the physical and on online world. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm James Brokenshire. I'm the Security Minister from the United Kingdom. I'm pleased to be here to recognize this important launch today and this global pledge to do more to protect our children. We're all here today because young people around the world are being subjected to horrific online child sexual exploitation and abuse. Ruthlessly targeted by up to three quarters of a million predators who could be online at any one time. The scale of the global threat is horrifying and we know that it's getting worse. More than 3.5 million accounts are now registered to the world's most depraved dark web sites. Last year, the tech industry reported 69 million child sexual abuse images and videos, up by over 50% in 12 months. The impact is immense. Stripping the most vulnerable in our society of the dignity and humanity, victimizing those we have a solemn duty to protect. This life-shattering Abuse is happening in all countries, on all platforms, and putting all of our children at immeasurable risk. Child sex offenders exploit technological advances to inflict misery, sharing vile materials and tips on how to target children. They unite to isolate, ensnare, and manipulate our young people and cause pain and suffering that can last a lifetime. So we have united to stop them in their tracks and show their victims that they are not alone. This launch is an important milestone in our battle to protect our kids online. I'm here today on behalf of the Home Secretary who chaired the five country ministerial meeting in London where we agreed to create these voluntary principles. We're proud to have led the urgent work to agree these crucial commitments and to have industry partners here today to adopt them. This global outrage requires a comprehensive global response. So I'm honored to stand with our international friends and partners to present the voluntary principles alongside the tech giants who will help us to deliver for brave survivors and prevent the abuse of more victims. I want this landmark collaboration across borders and sectors to define a stronger, new, united approach, delivering a whole system response. These principles provide a, a blueprint for doing just that. 
They reflect the complex, diverse, and extreme nature of the threat, from re-victimizing by image sharing to predatory grooming and the live streaming of abuse. They'll stop offenders dodging around the law by signaling international agreement to crack down on supposedly legal material used to advertise abuse and traumatize victims. Critically, they'll provide a framework for tech companies to do more. Six have shown leadership in working with us. It's critical that others follow them by endorsing and acting on these principles. And through the UK established We Protect Global Alliance, we'll promote these voluntary principles even wider to the 90 plus countries who are members. In doing so, our absolute priority is protecting those who've been exploited or are vulnerable to abuse. So in developing these principles, we listen to survivors like the incredible Phoenix 11, who have courageously spoken out to stop more lives being destroyed. They have bravely played their part, and the Five Eyes countries have responded. Now it's the industry's turn to show that they have listened and will act to invest in their users and harness the full possibilities of this ambitious new pledge. I am delighted you are with us on this, and I applaud your commitment and support so far. Equally, I won't pretend we've always seen eye to eye. Indeed, the UK government is legislating to ensure you always fulfill a duty of care to your users. But I recognize the efforts that those in this room have made. And I hope this is just the start of us working together to do more. Because our children should be free to enjoy the huge benefits of the internet, not be threatened by it. To do this, we must continue to work together to confront the difficult challenges before us. Take privacy, a fundamental democratic right that all the governments represented here today take incredibly seriously. But this must be balanced against the safety of our children and their right to live online without fear of exploitation. The UK has consistently raised its concerns about the impact on child safety of the European Union's draft e-privacy regulation. The British people asked to leave the EU to take back control of our country and laws, and we're proud to have delivered and to be seizing the opportunity to drive forward powerful new global partnerships just like this. But sadly, our privacy concerns go much deeper. <coughs> Encryption remains the elephant in the room. Last year, Facebook identified around 12 million incidents of child sexpo sexual exploitation abuse on Messenger, something that I absolutely commend them for, for doing. Yet, plans to encrypt this service would leave you blind to the same crimes, blind to the same abuse, sending predators back into the shadows, back into the darkness protected from the AI advances that could expose them and call them out. I've got to say that putting our children at risk for what I believe are marginal privacy gains is something I really struggle to believe any of us want. We all have a duty to put our kids first. This insidious threat does not stop at any of our borders and we must continue to work together to reach into every dark corner of the virtual and real world and shine a bright, piercing light. Today's launch is a hugely important step and I'd like to thank all of you for everything that has been done. Together, we can give our children the online freedom, the online security and the childhood they deserve. Indeed, it is our duty, our obligation that we do. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is William Blair, and I'm the Public Safety Minister for Canada. 
I'd like to begin by, by thanking the Attorney General Barr and Acting Secretary Wolf and the U.S. government for their warm welcome here today and giving the Five Eyes an opportunity to come together on this very important initiative and this very important announcement. I'm very pleased to, to be able to share with my colleagues our unwavering commitment and resolve. You, know, we, you all saw earlier today the remarkable testimony of survivors of child exploitation and child sexual abuse online. Their testimony is not only inspiring and courageous, it's compelling. It compels us to action. It, they cannot be ignored and they, can, and they will not be ignored. And by taking action together on, on the introduction of these voluntary principles, we intend that industry and government will create a safer online environment for them and for all children. There is no greater duty than the protection of our most vulnerable citizens in every country, in every place in the world, our children. And child sexual exploitation is not new in our society, but te technology and the internet have made things much more challenging in the investigation, in the prevention, in the detection of this terrible crime. Technological advances have made it easier for perpetrators to anonymously share and view exploit exploitative and abusive material. And they've created avenues for predators to find potential victims anywhere in the world, to lure them and to persuade them to share photos and videos of themselves. And this vile material can instantly be made available to people around the globe. And in, what we have seen overwhelmingly is that young girls are most likely to be the victims of these abhorrent crimes. And as we heard from the Phoenix 11, the consequences, the lifelong consequences of that exploitation and that victimization can be awful and long lasting. This happens too often in our country and everywhere in the world. And as the numbers that, that we have available to us show us that perhaps this is only the tip of the iceberg because so many of these crimes go unreported and undetected. And for example, I'll share with you some data. As of November 2018, more than 267 million images and videos have been reviewed by our National Center for Missing and Exploited Children Identification Program. And we also know that of that ex extraordinary number of 257 million, only 15,800 victims have been identified and, and rescued from their exploitation. And given the global scale and the nature of this problem and its increasingly complex nature, collaboration and cooperation uh, between sectors, between governments, law enforcement, our communities and industry is absolutely essential to our success. And that is why we have been working within the Five Eyes uh, partnership and along with industry stakeholders in a collaborative effort to keep our children safe. We are proud to play a leadership role in global efforts and I wanted to share with you some of, some of the experience that we have had in Canada. We have an extraordinary organization in Canada called the Canadian uh, Centre for Child uh, Protection, C3P. And they have been doing extraordinary work with, with the Phoenix 11 and also uh, by enabling us all to pursue and prosecute offenders, to work with the digital industry and find new ways to combat th this terrible crime. We have provided funding for them to, to introduce a thing called Project Arachnid and the results of which are truly innovative and exceptional and a tool of, to fight against this vile crime. This is, a, this is a technology that can scan up to 12,000 images per second, detect sexual abuse and exploitation material, provide, notify providers and help to remove the content. And since its launch, nearly 13.8 million suspect images have been reported to various providers. But tragically, this has not resulted in their removal from the internet because many service providers are simply not responding and we need the, the tools and the collaboration to ensure that we can be successful in taking these images down. We've made real progress on this issue, but there's a great deal more work to, done, to be done in order for us to keep our children safe, to prevent further victimization, and to bring perpetrators to justice. That's why collectively, we in the Five Eyes will continue to work vigorously together to pursue the fight and cooperation of our international al allies and with all of the public and private sector employees. I thank the members of the Five Eyes and for our industry partners for their commitment today to adhere to the voluntary principles. I believe that through their adherence and the sharing of best practice, we will make significant progress in addressing this vile crime. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name's Peter Dutton. I'm the Australian Minister for Home Affairs. Uh, can I say firstly, thank you very much uh, to the Attorney General uh, for his leadership in this space and for hosting us uh, at this very important time. I'd also like to acknowledge 
Acting Secretary Wolf uh, for his engagement and to all of my Five Eyes colleagues, this has been a long journey and we meet today with a very significant step having been taken, uh, but there are many more to take. I want to say thank you very much uh, to all of the industry representatives whose partnership we seek to strengthen today and to acknowledge very much so the heroes that we listened to this morning, those people who represent the victims of this vile crime. Our unflinching commitment to protecting you from ongoing and future abuse and to preventing any child from being subjected to the profound harms you have suffered is what brings us here today. I don't have to convince anyone here of the benefits of the internet. All of us use it on a regular basis. But online connectivity has enriched our lives and fuelled our economies in countless ways. But when viewed through the prism of child sexual abuse, the utopian vision of an ungoverned internet has given way to a dystopian reality. Nothing represents the darkest corners of the internet like child sexual abuse. The lives of children, the most vulnerable members of our communities, are destroyed in the production of this material for the sexual gratification of offenders. They are further re-victimised each and every time the images and videos depicting their abuse are shared online. The severe and enduring harm experienced by these victims and survivors and their families and communities is almost too much for any human being to contemplate. But contemplate it, we must. The abhorrence of these crimes is compounded by their growing prevalence. In fact, every five minutes, a web page shows a child being sexually abused. Australia, I'm sorry to say, contributes, contributes to the epidemic of child sexual abuse. In 2019, the Australian Federal Police received almost 17,000 reports of online child sexual abuse involving Australian children or child sex offenders. Each report can represent hundreds or thousands of photos and videos. Live streamed child sexual abuse is becoming increasingly prevalent around the world. For as little as 20 Australian dollars, a buyer can request and even remotely direct such on demand or made to order live streams by paying and instructing abusers of children these children of specific ages at specific times in specific ways. And Australian law enforcement has found that not only is the live stream market growing, the children are getting younger and the violence is becoming more extreme. Publicly accessible social media and communication platforms remain the most common methods for meeting and grooming children online. It's unsurprising when 99% of the reports made to the US National Centre last year came from electronic service providers. The rapid advancement of communication technologies and anonymising tools like encryption allows offenders to diversify their methods and evade law enforcement. One technique adopted by child sex offenders is to initiate innocuous conversations on these open platforms before encouraging the children to other platforms that provide the offender anonymity. The dark web is a shadowy virtual underworld that makes anonymity, that takes an anonymity to a whole new level. By rendering offenders unidentifiable and untraceable, that's why unsurprisingly it has become a safe haven for criminals of all types, including those who abuse and exploit children. All of us as governments, as people, must continue to do more. As one example, our government's passed legislation that allows security and law enforcement agencies to oblige communication companies to provide technical assistance to investigators of serious criminal offences and national security threats. One key principle that underlines all our efforts is that whilst governments and law enforcement can do many things to combat child abuse, we cannot do it all. And a feature of our approach has been to foster cross-sector collaboration wherever possible, NGOs, academia, industry and international counterparts are certainly equal partners in this fight. I'm proud that the Australian Government has worked very closely with our Five Eyes partners represented here today. But all of our partnerships uh, are built on many pillars and some of the pillars uh, include the ability to keep children safe, to make sure that they can enjoy 
an upbringing where they can play safely in our communities as well as online. We want to make sure that those young lives aren't destroyed in the ways that thousands of them before have. I want to make sure that we can continue this work with the industry because if we don't, technology will continue to get ahead of us. So I stand before you today uh, to discuss the outcome of another important partnership, that between all of our five eyes ministerial governments uh, and the digital industry sector. Uh, we should be proud of the work that we've been able to achieve today and I hope that uh, it represents a new page in the relationship uh, that we can work together to defeat this scourge uh, and we must continue to double our efforts each and every time we gather. Thank you. Tina koto, tina koto, tina tato kato, ko Martin Tifano, ko Mohi Tifano, Fangai, ko Natika Hununu to Iwi, ko Tracy Takuingua. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Tracy Martin. I am from New Zealand. I am the Minister for Children and the Minister of Internal Affairs. Can I acknowledge all those that have been here today? I want to acknowledge our hosts, my Five, Eye, five Eyes partners, and senior officials. Um, I'd also like to thank the representatives of the dig digital industry and NGOs who are here today. Your work with us has helped to ensure that the volunt voluntary principles have become a reality. And finally, I would like to acknowledge the survivors who are in attendance um, and thank them for their courage um, and their drive, their commitment, their absolute um, deliberate effort around this important work. Today is an important day in the journey we are taking to address and combat online child sexual exploitation and abuse. Online child sexual exploitation and abuse is a growing problem as you have heard. The more connected we are through the huge advances in the digital world, the more at risk many become. Uh, this is especially true for our children and young people. They are vulnerable, they are easily misled, they are easily manipulated and must be protected from this abuse and exploitation. With the massive expansion of the internet, we're seeing an, an expansion of online child sexual exploitation through websites, chat forums and other platforms. Those who engage in online child sexual exploitation find all manner of ways in which to circumvent current barriers and regulations. This is despite the current efforts and the work of the digital industry. For many of us, we can't imagine these acts. They are unspeakable. And yet, the Phoenix 11 have ensured that the unspeakable is now spoken of. Um, and again, we need to thank them for that, for their absolute courage in fighting this good fight. The voluntary principles are an important step toward ensuring the loopholes currently utilised by those who engage in online sexual exploitation are closed. But it is just a step. The words must be backed with actions. The safety of children around the world is paramount to all of us here today. Working with the digital industry has ensured the voluntary principles are robust, flexible and, we hope, effective. The New Zealand Government is pleased to sign and be part of the launch of the voluntary principles because although we are, somewhat, we are a somewhat isolated um, island nation geographically um, in the digital age, we are as prone as any other country to the scourge of online child sexual exploitation. In the last financial year, we received approximately 3,000 cyber tip reports from the National Centre for Missing and Exploited Children. And I want to thank John and Michelle and their team for hosting me yesterday and the service that they do every day for our, the world's children. New Zealand is committed to combating online child sexual exploitation and working with other nations, NGOs and the digital industry in this work. The voluntary principles will be invaluable in this regard. The safety of our tamariki, our children, is paramount, especially with so many of them able to access the internet. Um, as has already been mentioned, in the real world, we would be able to see these predators coming. We must be able to see them in the digital space as well, because we cannot hope to protect our children if we cannot see the danger. Over time, we hope that we will ensure that there is no safe space for this, host, for this content to be hosted anywhere. It, is, it doesn't um, pass my notice that we are live streaming this announcement today. 
So while we've got the opportunity, I want to speak to the consumers. Um, and I want to ask those that are as concerned as we are for our children, your children, around the planet, to acknowledge those digital companies, those technology companies that have come to the table. I ask you to um, interact with them and support them and let them know that you're part of this fight as well. Let them know that if they keep moving forward and implement the voluntary principles that we have here, that you will support them with your custom. But let those that aren't at the table know that if they cannot assure you, ensure that they are protecting your children, then that also will have an effect. Thank you again for being here today. And again, we look forward to making this a better place for our children. Kia ora. Well, good afternoon. Uh, as the Acting Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, it's certainly an honor to be here to mark this crucial step we're taking in our shared fight against online child sexual exploitation. The department joins each of you in your commitment to preventing this heinous crime. We are privileged to be joined here today by members of the Phoenix 11 survivor group has been mentioned. Bringing your voices into this space requires great courage given each of your experiences. But you share your stories nevertheless to make the internet a safer place for children. You're, you serve as an example for all of us I'd also like to thank the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, NETMIC, and the Canadian Center for Child Protection, as we heard earlier. Two remarkable organizations dedicated to fighting online, online child sexual exploitation. And to the internet, or to the technology companies who supported the development of these voluntary principles and who are endorsing them today, thank you again for your efforts. There's a lot of work to be done, and we commend each of you for stepping up. We hope more companies will follow your lead. Attorney General Barr, thank you for your leadership you've shown by prioritizing this issue at the Department of Justice. And finally, I'd like to extend my appreciation to our international colleagues who have visited us and traveled here today and who committed last year during the five country ministerial to take on this important initiative and to see it through completion. Last year, NITMIC received 16.9 million reports of online child sexual exploitation, including child sex trafficking, to, a, to its cyber, cyber tip line and nearly 70 million files of child sexual abuse material. Over 99.6% of these reports came from technology companies voluntarily, proactively searching their platforms for illicit content. At the department, one in 10 ICE Homeland Security investigation, Investigations agents are dedicated to the investigation of online child sexual exploitation. These investigations, again, led by HSI, are arresting nearly 4,000 child sexual offenders and rescuing more than 1,000 victims of child sexual exploitation in FY 2019 alone. Nothing is of greater importance to this administration and to the Department of Homeland Security than ensuring the safety and security of all Americans, especially the most vulnerable among us, our children. Fortunately, the administration has made significant progress towards this goal. On January 31st, the President signed the Executive Order on Combating Human Trafficking and Online Child Exploitation in the United States with the express purpose of protecting Americans and their families. Two weeks prior, the Department of Homeland Security released its very first strategy to combat human trafficking, the importation of goods produced with forced labor and child sexual exploitation. Our plan bolsters the incredible work the men and women of ICE HSI are doing to identify and assist victims and bring child sex offenders to justice. Strategy also leverages the authorities and resources of every component across the department to put an end to these despicable crimes. Combined with the voluntary principles we heard today uh, that are being released today, government and technology sector are enabling more companies and countries to combat this threat, supporting victim survivors, and finally bringing this unspeakable crime to light. I'm confident that the voluntary principles we're announcing today will help us move forward with our goal of creating a world where children grow up free from sexual exploitation. The principles will hopefully establish new norms across the private sector by incorporating child safety throughout a company's operations and properly considering the needs of victim survivors. When fully implemented, we're confident that the principles will have the ability to prevent online child sexual exploitation. Principles are also a testament of what can be achieved through public-private collaboration. When the government works in tandem with, the private com with private companies to combat child sexual exploitation, it improves both public safety and the security 
and reputations of corporate platforms. Six companies that participated in this process are global technology leaders who are already incorporating, as we heard earlier, principles into their own operations. I want to emphasize that this process was completely voluntary. These companies choose to, chose to work with us because they recognize the problem and they want to make these principles the norm among the industry. We hope that all tech companies will eventually follow their lead. Because ultimately, it is a collaborative action, tech companies across the globe making these principles the industry standard that will bring an end to the scourge, again, of online child sexual exploitation. We believe that offering a framework of companies can adopt freely and assess their own progress puts everyone on a path to achieving this goal. And while the principles can help advance the private sector's ability to respond to this threat, the department remains concerned about the effect of companies going dark on online child sexual exploitation investigations. We recognize encryption is an essential cybersecurity tool in the hands of the right people. But like any tool, it can be abused. Warrant-proof encryption can be used by criminals and child abusers to remain hidden from law enforcement. Should certain platforms go dark, our investigatory capabilities and lawful access will be significantly affected, especially when it comes to our ongoing fight against online child sexual exploitation. If platforms deploy warrant-proof encryption, our leads would fall dramatically overnight. Authorities have to go through a rigorous legal process with privacy protections before they can even ask a company to provide information connected to a crime. Our department is committed to working with the private sector to find a solution to this problem, while also upholding America's privacy rights. The safety of children is paramount to a prosperous society. Fortunately, the framework set forth by the voluntary principles will assist technology companies in countering this threat. I know it's difficult, especially for those of us who are parents, to fathom the idea of a perverted individual sexually exploiting a child of any age. But the reality is that this exists on a massive scale, as we've heard. 70 million files of child sexual abuse material were voluntarily, again, reported to NITMIC last year. We believe in a world where no child or infant should be harmed in this way. I'm confident that together we can change the, the paradigm of child sexual exploitation and stop it, as it before it ever occurs. Launching these principles is a significant first step in protecting children online. Thank you again for having me. Thank you for my colleagues for being here today and for addressing this issue. Thank you.